Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk watch accessories. Today we'll be taking a look at Moose Strap Company. Now they're relatively new to the game of watch accessories, but I think they make a pretty decent product, so I'd love to show you it today. Disclaimer, Billy over at Moose Strap Company did send these straps in to me for review. I was not paid, however, for my opinions, and they will be candid, so Billy, you've been warned. Now, on to the strap review. Here in front of me, I have a green version of the Moose Strap. There's actually four color variations, so decent selection for a new company. There's this sort of army green, there's a khaki, or a black version, and a Bond style NATO. That is to say, it's black with gray stripes running down the middle. Now I'm gonna say right off the bat, this strap is extremely similar to Blue Shark's Alpha Strap. I mean, it's, it's nearly spot on identical to that particular strap. The hardware itself is the same density and cut and design. And the strap itself, aside from the circular holes as opposed to the rectangular ones, are cut in around about the same place. I wish I had an alpha strap in front of me so I could show you, but I don't. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. Um, because the Alpha Strap is the high end for the Blue Shark lineup, and they run about $32, whereas these Moose Straps over at Billy's Company run for about $20. Now, for the good and the bad. Uh, I like to start with a bad note first, so we can end on a sweet note later. NATO straps in particular are not my favorite. I actually prefer metal bracelets, maybe a leather strap every now and then, rubber straps for sure, but nylon straps, not typically, because I hate the fact that they add so much thickness to your watch. And you can actually tell here that there is a lot of extra height added to this Raymond Weil when it's on this particular NATO. And that's because the, the thickness of just one of these pieces of fabric is almost two millimeters in density. So you can imagine something like this adding a little over three millimeters of height to your watch when it's strapped on. Now to illustrate the next bad point about this NATO, I'm gonna to have to strap it on my wrist. So just one moment. And here it is, on the wrist. Now this is what your admirers would see when they're looking at your lovely watch. Um, and as you can tell, it's, it does stand off the wrist quite a bit, and I'll show you over on the B-cam. Here the piece is. Here is a little bit of a profile view, and you can tell what I'm talking about there. You know, every NATO has this problem, but thick ones in particular have it the worst. Now, it isn't necessarily a bad thing. I know some people prefer thick nylon straps. Me, personally, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of thick straps, but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's just my opinion. However, I will state while we're here my next bad point, and that is the NATO's length. Now, on the website, you'll note that you can't actually order this in varying lengths. You just get the one size that fits all, or, you know, kind of. Now, you'll notice on the top half of the strap, I'm wearing the strap in sort of a funky way. I have the strap N curled over that secondary keeper and looped through the front. Now, the only reason I'm doing that is because, unfortunately, the strap isn't quite long enough. I'm about two, four, five notches away from the widest setting, so I'll set it there again and show you in the B-cam. Here we have the buckle attached to the hole where it was previously on my wrist, and if you have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, expect it to fit right around this region as well. Now here's the problem I was trying to illustrate earlier. The strap itself just isn't quite long enough to comfortably fold over into that keeper. While on the wrist, it's, it's rather difficult operation, and off the wrist, it's still a little bit of a time-consuming process. As you see, I'm trying to illustrate here. This is uh, one way to wear your strap while it's on the wrist. You just fold it under that uh, secondary keeper, or you could more traditionally fold it over the top and have it run back. Now try it to do this, or at least imagine doing this while it's on the wrist, you know, without a secondary hand. It's, it's not the easiest operation. Um, that is, is really inconvenient, unfortunately. If it was a greater length, it would be e easier to curl over and slip under there. And I actually prefer when these are long enough to fit under both keepers. I think the aesthetic is just a little better than what this looks like. And that's just me personally. Well, you know, off the wrist, it looks quite 
good uh, rolled over, but again, it is kind of hard to make that curl over comfortably with just one hand. All right, all sour notes out of the way. I wanna talk about some good things in regards to this strap. Um, first and foremost, it's not super glossy like one of its contemporaries, the Alpha Strap. It, it's, it's, it's glossy still, but it's not horribly glossy. You can see what I'm talking about here. The nylon itself has a little bit of a reflective sheen, but it's, it's more mute when you have it in front of you. The strap itself is actually stitched together very well, and you can see they went ahead and stitched, double stitched these keepers into place, so they definitely feel extremely secure. Same goes for the buckle here, and the, the hardware on this piece is, uh, you know, amongst some of the best. It is very thick, stainless steel, so, you know, if you enjoy that, then that's there for you. It's a little bit better. It's certainly a lot better than a $5 NATO. You'll also see the logo for the company etched into the buckle there. Nothing on the back. And the holes themselves are stitched and, and threaded together very well. The ends are also finely stitched. It, it's, it's a really great looking strap aesthetically. And um, I, I quite like the quality of the strap. I think it's a very phenomenal strap. I do wish it was just a little bit thinner. I think that would have done a lot for me. Or maybe even making it a single piece nylon. You know, I'm not such a huge fan of these two piece nylon straps. I do prefer a single piece. Now just imagine it if it was this thin on the wrist instead. It would be a whole heck of a lot more practical for the wearer. Now I know I've been commenting on the strap being too thick and that's just a matter of opinion. I know a lot of folks that absolutely love thick nylon straps like this. I just think it's a little bit better suited for a more rugged watch. Something a little bit more like this. That's right guys, I joined the Big Watch Club when I received this piece just a little bit earlier today and I've actually hinted at this time piece to a few viewers. Uh, this is a Seiko SBDC 035. These are only sold in Japan, but it's not what we're talking about today, but it illustrates perfectly my point on this strap. It, it is a thick, rugged strap meant to be worn for an outdoorsman or an adventurer. And I think this particular look in conjunction with the strap is just a good thing. You know, I don't know about you, but when you have a watch that's this colossal in scale, you know, just a just a behemoth of a watch, it's complemented perfectly with a thick nylon strap like this, and I actually do enjoy this look. And of course, I'll put it on the wrist so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can imagine if you owned a tuna or a thick watch, something like this, it would look around about the same. There are about two minutes of footage that I'm gonna cut out of me fixing this to my wrist, but here it is, guys. You know, when you have a watch with this much presence, it's only accentuated with a thick nylon strap like this, and I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like in the B-cam. Um, yeah, that's um, it's a whole lot of watch. It's extremely, extremely rugged looking, and you know, that's that's a look. You know, I absolutely love this kind of aesthetic with this type of watch, and it's actually something I just didn't have in my collection, so it's cool to have straps tailored for a particular style of watch, and that's what I would say is good about Moostrap Company. Well, Moostrap Company itself doesn't offer a lot of options by way of NATO, what you do get is a really well-designed, rugged strap at a great price. Now, there are only four color variations, but I'm sure he will expand upon that as his company grows. I think for now, if you're looking for something to complement a rugged, outdoorsy type watch, this might be the strap for you. Now, my personal bias about the thickness of the strap uh, not being appropriate for most watches out of the way, I think the length is a major issue. It would be great if you could offer varying lengths on the strap, and because of that, I would probably rate this an 8 out of 10. It is a solid strap with very, very good hardware, but there are certainly other options out there that you could get with varying lengths and are maybe a little bit thinner for my sake. Um, it would be cool to see what Billy adds to his collection as he moves on. I'm, I'm very excited just as a watch enthusiast and, and consumer to see what he produces. So Billy, 
let me know. Now guys and gals, that is actually where I'm gonna end the video today. If you liked it, feel free to hit that like button. If you have watched friends, forums, or groups and you found this video insightful, I will encourage you to share it with them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. That's why it's there. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.